I'm J. Cole Sanford, cash crop specialist with New Holland, and uh, today we're going to look at the newly unveiled uh, CR11. It's an all-new design, completely clean sheet of paper, as they say, um, and from the bottom up. And really the biggest thing about this machine is when they were going through the design process and developing it over the last decade, they came to the conclusion that they said, we only want to add things that actually help us with the total cost of harvesting. So what we mean by that is the total cost of harvesting, what is that? You know, for every dollar that you spend on the machine, what kind of return can you get out of it because of the capacity or the loss or the functionality of the machine? So everything that was designed came with that in mind. And so that's where we'll kind of start this talk and kind of review all those things. And really, it's really four big things that involve that impact total cost of harvesting. And the first one is productivity. So how fast can we drive or how many acres can we cover an hour? So the, the first thing a producer may think of is, of course, is horsepower, which this one has about 775 horse, it's a Cursor 16 engine. Um, and then the components that actually process the grain. What can we do to those to make us uh, use that horsepower more effectively so we can be efficient with it and, get, and cover more acres per hour? Then on the next little pillar that's kind of behind that total cost of harvesting is total losses. So we want to minimize those losses. So we want to be able to drive fast and have no losses. And the way that, and where does that come from? Well, that comes from the threshing system as well as the all new, completely redesigned cleaning system, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. Um, and those, those two things in conjunction with each other give us the ability to try to minimize those losses and in some situations even get them to zero, which is quite, uh, quite a, a feat to take when we like look at the 50 foot uh, FD250 that we have on the front of the machine here at the show. Um, and then from uh, one more standpoint, of course, is the total uptime. That's another one where we talk with customers uh, throughout the last, well, I've been in this role since 08, and that's one of the things we talk about a lot with our customers is the uptime when you're in the field. And the first thing a lot of customers think about is, you know, uh, downtime. And we actually take uptime as another piece of that, in addition to downtime, is time when you have to get out of the cab to make a change to the machine. So let's say we wanted to change the chopper from high to low, or we wanted to change the rotor gearbox. On yesterday's machine, we had to stop the thresher, stop the, the ground drive, had to go to zero miles per hour, right? And then we had to go and make those adjustments to the machine. We took it one step further and we said, uptime is gonna include those functions. So we want to be able to do all that from the cab. And we've actually done that as some optional components on the machine to give us those abilities to make changes to the configuration of the combine, so to speak. That way you don't have to get out of the cab and stop harvesting. So that's a big one that we're gonna look at when we do our walk around. And then uh, last but not least is residue management. So there, in fact, in, uh, in 2022, we actually won a silver medal at the Agritechnica or an Agritechnica award in 2022 for our residue system, which utilizes radar to determine where the actual residue went in relation to the rest of the, uh, the crop. Um, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty exciting thing. So come on, let's take a look. Um, so we'll start at the front of the machine and work our way through with the crop flow. So this machine's got the New Holland signature styling and that signature styling right there that you see is actually representative of the crop flow through the machine. It just kind of really brings uh, the inside of the machine out, I guess, for the, the actual visual design of the side of the, the shielding. So anyways, we'll start at the feeder house and work our way up. Um, with the very first TR combine that we launched back in 1975 when we launched twin rotors, the, the key function of that machine was is matched with feeding and matched with threshing. And that, that is carried on to the, to the CR flagship machines as well as to the new CR11 next gen combine. So the feeder house on this machine is the width of the rotors. The chopper or the beater and the chopper are all the same width. So then the crop, once it gets into the feeder house, it's straight through. We found that that's an incredible uh, function that they figured out in the 70s, you know, with the first TR that allowed this thing to excel in its capacity. Um, and so we took that, uh, that concept right to this machine as well. So this is a twin rotor 24 inch machine, um, which is uh, a little bit larger from a rotor diameter standpoint than our largest combine uh, in the CR flagship class. And that feeder house jumped its width a little bit to match that match width feeding through. So then the crop flow goes through there and we'll open up uh, the side here. And I'll kick on the lights. We have some lights underneath there as well. So the rotor system starts there um, and works its way up. Uh, the rotors are longer and uh, at the bigger diameter at the 24 inches, like I mentioned there before. The other thing that we changed with the concaves is they're now sectional. Um, so we can, um, there's three concave sections right there that are pretty easy to change. 
um, and make for a pretty good situation when a producer is changing from wheat to corn and beans. That's about the big time when you would change the, the thing. So I want you to notice something else. So I mentioned about getting the most out of that 775 horse. Notice the angle of the rotors. That's pr a pretty common angle that we had on the CR, but that's also the angle of the engine. So we've actually went from a sideways facing uh, engine to an inline engine position. So when we do that, that allows us to get um, a better power efficiency to the rotor drive. So now the engine is at the same angle facing as the rotors, and that allows us to put the PTO gearbox on the rear of the engine assembly, then allows us to um, drive into the rotors. So basically, one of the CB or, uh, hydromechanical drives is driving the rotor system, which actually utilizes the left-hand rotor as a, as a drive shaft. So as, that, as the, um, we drive the ro this left rotor and then we go into the front gearbox that actually drives the DFR or the dynamic feed roll. That's an important one to remember. If we look at today's flagship CR machines, the DFR is driven off of an independent drive, which has a, either uh, on a variable drive machine, we can increase or decrease that speed independently of the rotor. On this machine, the rotor drive is driving the DFR. So now when we increase the speed of the rotors or decrease the speed of the rotors, that also will increase or decrease the speed of the DFR with it, which allows that match with feeding to have match with force to help us feed the rotors. So that's an important one that I think adds to the capacity and also can reduce uh, grain damage on the machine because we're matching those uh, two speeds together. So the driveline is um, also won some awards at Agritechnica as well and uh, uh, utilizes hydromechanical um, drives to then give us the ability to have an auto de-slug system for the machine. So if we were to the plug, even though we say that it's, it's pretty rare, but it does happen in some of our markets like Western Canada with uh, canola and a few other crops, uh, we can have a, a combine slug. The combine can detect that and then ask you if you want to perform the auto de-slug, which now allows us to rock the DF or the rotors back and forth, as well as the DFR and the feeder house. And it does that automatically to clear the blockage. Again, trying to keep you out of the cab, or trying to keep you in the cab for any time for a lot of those situations where you may have to get out of the cab. So that's a little bit about the drives. When we come and look at the cleaning shoe, um, you know, we, when we talk about the extra horsepower that we're adding, uh, the larger machine, the higher capacities that we're trying to get, especially as we look at the yields across North America, what are they doing? They're increasing over time. Um, so we had to increase the capacity of the cleaning shoe. And that's where a lot of the, um, I'll say the, <laughs> the innovation of the machine comes to shine. So basically we have two sets of top sieves and two sets of bottom sieves, and we actually increase the width of them and the, although we did not increase the envelope of the combine. So if we took the shell of the combine, it's, it's fixed in its position or its dimension, essentially for global requirements, if we look at roading and some of those sorts of things. So we had to stretch the inside of it. When we did that, we gave us the capability to package a larger cleaning shoe and a new method of terrain compensation and a new method of uh, distribution compensation. And we'll, we'll kind of go into detail with that. So basically we can, um, the grain pan, the tops, the two top sieves are in line in the top three there. The sieve set and the grain pan can shake to the left or to the right to compensate for, for slopes up to 28%, depending on the crop, which then gives us the ability to widen it out. So it no longer actually physically self levels like we're used to on the flagship machine, but we stretch that out. The interesting part though, is we can now tell uh, distribution of crop material off of the grain pan. So the grain pan has the ability to shift left and right independent of those top sieve sets. And we have a set of sensors that are testing that as well as we split our loss sensors to a left and a right hand, which basically can give us the idea or give a combine a closed loop approach to determining crop flow across the sieve. It sounds pretty wild, like wild stuff. It's pretty crazy, but really what it does is it allows us to get more, comp uh, more capacity out of the machine. Um, and that's what we were after. Return system are right, is right here. So we went to, we did go to, to a single return system. So we have a spike tooth cylinder that's the uh, rethresher that's similar to what we have today on the flagship machine. We just increased its size. Um, so it's a little bit wider and that material then goes into the auger and then goes up in here and then falls onto the shoe. So those might be watching and say, well, we went to one return, are we going to be biased with material, return material on the left-hand side of the combine? And the answer is technically, yes, we are. But what do we do to fix it? 
we have the grain pan that can shift. So we, in some situations, the grain pan may actually be moving to the left or right when the combine's on a level, level, level ground. Um, so we're utilizing that closed loop system to figure out where the crop flow is on the machine. It's quite, uh, quite, the, quite the thing to see, especially um, uh, some of the testing that the folks have done in product development to, that saw the, the capacity gains that we saw with this. Upwards of 20 to 40% over what we have today with the CR chassis. And the CR chassis is no slouch. <laughs> so we'll move on to the residue system. I'll close the shield here. So in, in the idea of higher capacity, higher engine horsepower, and getting the ability to be more productive, Part of that productivity includes the grain tank and the grain handling system. So that's what, <laughs> that's what got really big for the, the CR11. This thing holds 567 bushel. It's our largest grain tank we've ever had internally. And we may have to fact check me online, but I think it might be the largest uh, from factory uh, grain tank that's in the industry right now. Um, and then we also have uh, a six bushel a second unload rate with the new uh, unload auger system. Um, and we didn't just speed it up. Uh, we actually increased the diameter of the auger tube itself to have that higher capacity. Because let's think, you know, as this machine gets optimized over the next 20 to 30 years, we're going to need all the capacity uh, room that we can have. And this actually gets us there. Um, so from a grain handling talk, we'll talk about that on the other side uh, for the what I like to call the grain leg that we use to evacuate grain from the cleaning shoe to the uh, to the uh, grain tank. But we'll talk about that uh, when we get to the other side. We'll migrate to the to the other system here that's completely redesigned in a, in a new method, and that's our residue system. So um, and that's one of those four pillars of the total cost of harvesting that we were discussing there earlier. And for a lot of producers they may not think about this this way but this residue system here is the first step of next year's crop and what we mean by that is um, if we can distribute the straw and residue and chaff equally and evenly behind the entire width of the header in this case 50 foot um, that will give us the ability to have a uniform emergence and no-till applications in the following year and it's basically keeping the ground temperature consistent across the whole field um, that's the beauty of this system. So we've actually tested it uh, up to 61 feet that it has the ability to evenly spread. Here at the show, we're just showing the FD250 uh, head. So we type in 50 foot on our combine display on the Intel V12s that we have, the two Intel V12s that we have in the cab. And now the system is on to automatically adjust itself to match the width of that spread width, utilizing not the Wi-Fi, but the radar, using all the Xena radar sensors on the left and right hand side. So basically this is sensing where the chaff and material is going, coming out of the machine. And it can determine if it's too far or too short based on the 50 foot, uh, just with the seeing system, the vision system here that the, that the radar uses. And then it will make adjustments. Consider the wind also. So when you have, because uh, it's not like we have harvest in the normal, <laughs> normal time when the wind is at zero miles an hour, uh, we're not always that fortunate. So this system, because of the wind, we actually see the result of what the chaff is, where the chaff is going. So if the wind is blowing this way, uh, more we know that we don't need to throw it as far on that side, but we need to throw it further on this side. So then it can change the speed of the residue system and make the adjustments and, and blow the chaff the right way. We've, uh, with our customers that ran the machines um, this last fall, that was probably one of the number one things they responded to as far as uh, being excited about as far as the, was the total spread of the machine. And so the, this system gives us that ability. We also can drop straw um, independent of uh, shoe chaff. Uh, that gives us the ability to windrow by this machine. It's still, when we're in chaff mode, just spending chaff through to the uh, residue system, it still utilizes the radar to figure out that width. So it's a, uh, a really robust system and everyone's been really excited about it. We can also utilize the, the button bank here and we can rotate this uh, residue system out of the way and we can get access into the cleaning shoe. But these are some of the buttons that we have on today's machine. They're just localized and more centrally located to give us the ability to uh, make uh, adjustments on the outside of the machine. Again, like the sieves, for instance, this for more of a maintenance or uh, diagnostic purposes, those, those are controlled in the cab like normal. So we want to keep you in the air conditioner or heater, depending on what uh, time of the year it is. Well, let's go on this side and we'll take a look at the grain handling system. With the new drive mechanism that we talked about there earlier, we no longer have the, the variators for the feeder uh, variator or the rotor because those are the hydromechanical uh, 
uh, uh, drives that are built into the back of the PTO that allow us to do that auto deslug. But this is our grain leg that we've got on the combine. We, we jokingly call it that just because of the newer and bigger size for the higher capacity in some of our corn markets. Um, so a really high throughput and it gives us the ability to uh, evacuate all the grain from the, the cleaning shoe. Because there's a little bit larger cleaning shoe, or a lot larger, um, in, because of the higher throughputs, we actually have a second clean grain cross auger. So if we kind of zoom in here, you might not be able to see it with the lighting, but we actually have a pre-cleaning, pre-clean uh, grain system auger that goes there. But essentially that's coming out and then actually dumps in to the clean grain elevator as the elevator goes by. So as the elevator goes by, it's taking that grain. So because of, to try to get the grain evacuated out of the system, we needed an extra auger. <laughs> and so the, uh, the, the, uh, the innovators at CNH uh, or at New Holland um, put, built that into the system. And here you can see the cleaning shoe systems uh, mechanism that's utilized for the, for the uh, shake of the shoe that gives us that ability to, to shift the, the material when we're on an incline. So we're in the cab of the CR11 and um, you know, a lot of times when we make big changes to a, a generational combine, sometimes a lot of changes come in the cab. Um, I think most CR owners today could probably sit in this thing and take off with it. Um, the console is fairly similar um, with the feel and the use of what we had today in uh, today's CR flagship machine. However, we've made some creature comfort improvements. We've added some ventilation to the left and right hand columns of the cab for uh, improved HVAC. We've changed uh, and updated the seat. This is actually the model year 24 seat that we'll get in the uh, CR machines. And we'll suppress some of our messages there. But all the machines come with an Intel, uh, a set of Intel V12 monitors um, that give us the ability to do a lot of interesting things um, from a standpoint of uh, remote capabilities for the dealership. So from a service standpoint, again, keeping that uptime as a, as a forefront uh, for the machine, this gives us uh, the ability for our PLM intelligence uh, capabilities to allow the dealer to view and see the machine statuses before they go out on the service call. So a lot of times they can solve those problems remotely um, or bring the right parts when they have to uh, come to the machine. We also have the ability for cameras on the machine. So we have cameras in the grain tank on the unload auger and on the rear of the machine. This machine isn't equipped with it, but we will have the option for a 360 degree camera. So if we look at the um, right hand side and left hand side, there's mounts for cameras there. So it'll be a lot like your pickup truck. So then you can have a bird's eye view of the combine when you're driving through the field, which will be great. Cause I was on the harvest run back in 04. And, you know, one of the rules was to never back up. Well, why was that? Because of visibility. You didn't want to run into another machine. Now with that 3D, 360 degree camera, uh, bird's eye view, we'll have the ability to maybe let up, uh, the custom harvester boss let me back up the combine for once in the field. He'd probably still say no, but I digress. But this gives us um, the feel and the, and the use case or the use of like the PLM intelligence that we've launched in T8s, T9s, and T7s. Um, this also gives us the ability to have an integrated control system for the FD250. So right out of the box, we just plug in, no extra harnesses, no extra components, no buttons or anything, uh, but we can control all the functions on the FD250 New Holland head by MacDon right from the Intel V12 display, which is really exciting. At the end of the day, the idea is more productivity, less loss, and less downtime, um, and, and a really good residue system. And I'm, and I'm, uh, everything I've seen so far, it's so impressive to see the, the customers that have been on the tours also have really been really welcoming of the new, the new technology of the CR11, and I can't wait to see it in the field. I'm Jay Cole Sanford with New Holland Agriculture. Thanks and have a great day.